for me, that would be great. Well, good evening. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to the 20, the class of 2022 Senior Parent Information Night. I am Ms. Lucero. I'm the College and Career Counselor here at Rampart. I've been at Rampart since 2008. Worked with students in a variety of different roles here, and just I'm really glad that you're here tonight. We're going to um, talk about a lot of different information, and you're going to hear from myself, um, Mr. Aducci, who's out uh, with the Jostens information, as well as Ms. Beth Hodge, who is here from the University of Alabama. And I want to share with you that the session tonight is being um, live streamed and recorded, so you will be able to view this at another time if you want to go back and listen to something that was spoken about. But I just uh, want you to know that that's what that uh, contraption there in the middle is for. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to hope that the technology all works well. So um, again, this is my contact information. My assistant, Ms. Cooper, is um, out here in the, in the foyer area, but we are here to help support you and your student from the counseling office with anything we can throughout the course of this school year. Additional folks in the counseling office are my colleagues. Most of you um, well, all should be either communicating with or know Ms. Holly Hiltz. She's a 12th grade counselor. We also have Ms. Katie Bratt, who works with seniors who have accommodation plans and then uh, other folks in our office as well. But if you need to reach us for any reason, please don't hesitate to give our office a call or send us an email. Okay, so just some agenda topics. We're gonna speak again about a lot of different things. I'm gonna speak to some Rampart specific uh, policies, procedures, senior event type things, and then uh, Beth will be speaking about what kinds of things you and your students should be paying attention to through the college applica application process as well as some financial aid um, information and so forth. So um, the college application process, and just so you're aware, I met with all the seniors in their English class earlier this week, um, and we talked about some of the things that we're gonna to discuss tonight, but one of the things that we talked about was the tools in which students can use to apply to college. Obviously, one of the tools is directly to the university using the university's own application tool. Another way is the Common App. If you're not familiar with the Common App, it's one application that a student can fill out that's available, that can be sent to over 900 schools in the country. So it's a way for students to efficiently fill out their college applications and send it to a variety of places, but it's commonapp.org. We did, uh, students and I did take a look at that together earlier this week, but just want to be sure you're familiar with that application tool. There's also the Coalition app. Coalition app is similar um, it, to the Common app, meaning it's one application that can be sent to a variety of places, um, and that's something you may see in your, your time applying to college this fall. Whoop. Places to get some information. So the district, I'm sure you're all aware that the district changed the website last spring, and it's a little bit, I find, difficult to navigate. Um, I'm not sure if you feel that way. But um, some places to get information from the Rampart website, if you, if you kind of click your mouse on the left-hand side of the screen. It provides you with a menu of options. One of those menu options is Student Life. And under Student Life is the Counseling tab as well as College and Career. So just wanna make sure that you know where on the Rampart website the new location is, is to find information about the Counseling Office and specifically College and Career. The other thing I want to have you pay attention to is the calendar icon on the left. And when you click that, you'll need to make sure that you are clicking the Rampart calendar because it will provide the district calendar as well as the Rampart calendar. And then you need to select college and career and seniors if you want to specifically view events for this year's graduating class. If you don't click these, it doesn't show on the calendar, and that's a new feature to the website. 
So make sure that you uh, note that on your computer. Naviance, if you've heard your students speak about Naviance, has anybody heard Naviance at home? I'm hoping so. <laughs> Good. Okay. So again, with your students, I met with them, like I said earlier this week, and we talked a lot about Naviance. What Naviance is, it's a web-based planning tool that students need to use this year as part of their college application process. They use this to research uh, schools, do a variety of different searches around scholarships and financial aid. There's a resume builder in there. Um, they, we list all of our college visits in Naviance. They sign up for those visits in their Naviance account. There's some um, academic course planning and career goal planning. But the main feature for seniors for using Naviance is this part right here. All official documents that are sent from Rampart have to be requested in the student's Naviance account. That includes transcripts and letters of recommendation. So the way this works is the student will list their colleges in here, then it prompts them to request those documents. I've told students that if they come down to my office and say, Ms. Lucero, I applied to see you Boulder, please send my transcript. I say, that's great that you've applied to Boulder, but you have to request your transcript in Naviance. You can't just tell me to send it. Or you might see um, something get printed off that says it's an official document request from a college. Also, those are, are good, but it still needs to be requested in Naviance. And I demonstrated with students, um, show, I showed them how to do that. But any, like I said, any kind of official document must be requested here. When a student pulls up Naviance, this is what it looks like. There are no, there's not a separate parent login. You need to use your student's login um, information to get in. There are, there's, this is the main um, landing page. There's these main tabs across the top and there's this colleges one that is where most of the task that a student will need to do is found in this section, but there's also some favorited um, items here, either option is okay. But again, they're going to list every college that they're applying to in Naviance, regardless of whether they're applying using the Common App, the Coalition App, or direct to the institution. They all have to be listed here for those documents to be requested and sent. When a, when a student makes a request, um, this is what the page looks like, and they'll use this pink plus sign thing here um, to add a request. Is basically everything in Naviance to add something is is done by this pink plus sign feature on the right hand side of the screen. Right now, students should be only requesting initial transcripts. Initial transcripts are six after six semesters, so at the end of their junior year, we send initial transcripts in the fall. They will go in in January and request mid-years to be sent, which is um, which will include grades from this term and a new GPA and a new rank. And then as we approach graduation in May, they will go back into Naviance and request a final transcript to be sent to the college of their choice. But right now, only requesting documents that are initial documents. Okay, letters of recommendation. Letters of recommendation are also requested in the student's Naviance account. And that is for any staff member here at Rampart. So if a student wants a teacher here at Rampart to write them a letter of recommendation, what I have directed students to do is first, they need to have a verbal conversation with the teacher and ask that teacher, will you write me or could you write me a letter of recommendation? Students should not be blindly sending a request without having a conversation with the teacher first. Teachers write these letters on their own time, um, often at night on the weekends, and so the teacher needs to agree to the student to write the letter to make sure that they can write a letter that's you know done well and so forth. So the teacher agrees to write the letter. Then the student will need to log into their Naviance account, do the formal request. The request then gets sent to the teacher the teacher writes the letter, they upload it into Naviance, and they send it through Naviance to the colleges. 
If your student is looking to have someone outside of Rampart send them a letter, that person that's outside of Rampart, a coach, somebody at church, a boss, etc., they would send their letter directly to the college and that does not go through Naviance, which is totally fine. But if it's a staff member here, the request is done through this process. You, again, you know, students, you need to allow, I say three weeks minimum, but you need to give people plenty of time to write those letters. I share a story one time that a student came into my office and said, Miss Lucero, I need 17 letters in three days. That's not gonna happen. So make sure that if you're working under November 1st deadlines, particularly that's really three months from yesterday, um, that students are starting to make those requests and having those conversations now. And then always follow up with a thank you note. That's always good. Financial aid. So um, the free application for student financial, sorry, the, yeah, the free application for student financial aid, that opens October 1st. You can't fill out the FAFSA at, you know, prior to that. The application goes or is available after October 1st through June 30th. District 20 is hosting a virtual financial aid night on September 29th at 6.30. The link for that event will be shared out with all of you as soon as we have it. The presenter that evening, um, her name is Erica Schaefer. She's from Colorado College and she works in the financial aid office. She will be hosting an informational session for all District 20 parents about the FAFSA, things you should be looking for, scholarships, et cetera, at this virtual event on the 29th. So just want to bring that to your attention and again, be looking for more information to come as soon as we have the link for that. NCAA, if any of your students are looking to play Division I, Division II athletics, NAIA, again, they need to make sure that documents such as transcripts are requested in Naviance so that we can send those to the eligibility centers. Eligibility determination starts after their junior year, and so those transcripts should be requested and sent uh, here this fall. We will have a District 20 NCAA night that's scheduled this fall. It will likely be an online virtual event and a date and time will be announced soon. ACT and SAT. So many of you I'm sure know that many colleges are going test optional um, right now due to the pandemic and test centers and testing being canceled last year. If your student still would like to take the ECT or SAT, they would need to register for test dates through College Board or for, through actstudent.org. There are dates throughout this school year available for registration, um, and all of that is handled through an online process. If you need assistance or um, need some assistance with the fee, please have your student come and see me. Again, college and military visits. So we have many schools that are hosting visits um, this fall. Some are virtual, some are in-person visits. They are, we have uh, colleges every day reach out to us and schedule a time to come and meet with Rampart students. That list of college visits is in their student's Naviance account. So you can see again under that main colleges tab at the top, there's a college visits uh, feature there and then you can see the whole schedule of schools that are coming. If a student is interested in a school that will be hosting a visit, they register and sign up for that visit again in Naviance and can attend that session. Uh, if your student needs um, the ASVAB for you know future military service, we are going to be hosting an ASVAB exam on September 17th here at school, and if that's something your student is interested in doing, please have them come see me or Ms. Cooper in the counseling office to sign up. There are some college fairs happening this fall. Um, some are virtual, some are in person. I wanna highlight this one on September 27th. It's at Coronado High School. That's the location of the fair, but it's the Southern Colorado College Fair starting at 5.30. Um, that's a great opportunity if you are needing to visit with some schools um, to attend. 
But we also have the, the NAC Act, the National Association for College Admission Counseling. There's a lot of virtual fairs that they're hosting, and then the Colorado Christian College Fair is on September 20th. Any other additional college fairs that we uh, get notified of, we'll make sure and announce to our students that information. We're also going to host a virtual college fair for Rampart and District 20 families uh, November 8th through the 11th. So more information about that will be coming as well. On September 14th, this is again another way for you and your student to get information if that's something you're interested in. Rampart High School is hosting a, a virtual ROAR night. ROAR stands for the Regional Office of Admission of the Rockies, and so we have representatives, Beth Hodge being one of them, um, and these folks who are experts in the college admission process will be hosting these online virtual sessions for our community. We're hoping to have sessions on financial aid and scholarships, the college admission process, letters of rec and essay, making the most of a virtual campus visit, and, and I'll be hosting a session specifically about Naviance. So that will be on the 14th um, of September. Another important date is Colorado Free Application Days. Has anybody heard of this being, an, yep. So in the past, Colorado has given, there's been one day in the fall that was a free application day. This year it's days, which is great, it's three days. And what this is, is um, students can submit their college applications to any of the 32 public universities in Colorado for free on these days. So what I've told students is this October 19th is not a time to start your application. You should be working on the application now and then by October 19th, having it ready to be submitted. Because if you submit to those schools on those days, you do not have to pay the application fee, which saves quite a bit of money. Um, so we here at Rampart on the 19th, which is a Tuesday, in the library, myself and some other colleagues are gonna, have, we have the whole library reserved and we have it available for seniors to come in and get assistance with submitting their applications if that's what they need, um, doing any of the last minute pieces that need to happen. But we wanna to try to have as many students use that, that opportunity to submit their college applications for free. Again, these, these dates are not a deadline. This is not a deadline for the college. Some students confuse that they have to have everything in by the 19th. That's not necessarily the case. They can submit their, their documents on those days for free, but they still have, each college has their own deadlines, which may be different, okay? Some important reminders. Communication. So students in District 20, for whatever reason, have two email accounts. One is a Google email, the other is an Outlook email address. We have to use, like those of us staff members to communicate with the student must use the Outlook email address to send information to kids. So if your student is not checking their Outlook email, they are missing all of the announcements for senior events, uh, stuff around um, deadlines for transcript requests, for, you know, stuff around Justin's deadlines for ordering. All of that email communication goes to their MSA email. So please encourage your students to check their Outlook email if they're not. And uh, teachers and myself do that always as well. Parents, please make sure that your contact information is up to date in Infinite Campus. Again, a lot of communication is going to be coming to you this year. If an email address is incorrect or changed your address, phone number, any of that kind of stuff, please make sure that you're updating that information for us as well. Uh, sorry, I think it went back. Mm. Uh, I think, oh, there it is, class rank. Class rank, if you need your students' class rank information, that is not anything that's in Infinite Campus or anything that you can look online. Class rank information needs to be obtained by either from me, Ms. Cooper, my assistant, or one of the other counselors in the office. So the students just need to make sure they bring their student ID with them and we'll give them their class rank information. Valedict oh gosh, sorry. Valedictorian and salutatorian, 
So we'll determine that after the conclusion of this term. Um, and valedictorians will speak, will be uh, some of the speakers that we have at graduation. So just a quick reminder about graduation requirements. So students in District 20 need to have 50 credits. They need to be allocated in all the right areas. And this year is new that they also, all students have to demonstrate, have, have to show proficiency in English and math. And that proficiency determination is based upon a test score. The test score can be the ACT, it could be the SAT, it could be the ASVAB, it can be ACT work keys, but they have to have the 50 credits and the test score in English and math. That is new for your graduating class. So if your student has questions about that, if you're not sure that they've met the requirement, if this is the first that you're hearing of it, hopefully not, um, please reach out to Ms. Bratt or Ms. Hiltz or myself we are working, my colleagues and I are working to provide many opportunities for students to take these exams that are now required for students to do um, as part of the graduation process, but that is a new thing for this year's students. So again, if you have any questions about that, please let us know. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Next Friday is a senior celebration day, if you've heard a little bit about that. Essentially what the day is gonna be is students need to go to their blue, I think it's a blue day. They're gonna go to their blue one class as scheduled. Starting blue two, they're gonna, all the seniors are gonna come in here. We're gonna have a senior class meeting. We're gonna then move them from this space to the gym. They're gonna take their big senior class picture in the bleachers um, in the gym. And then we're gonna move out to the athletic fields, the practice fields, and have some fun playing volleyball and spike ball and whatever, and food and stuff will be out there. We're also gonna to attempt to do a class of 2022. We're gonna try and put them in a 2020, or 22 um, on the field and get a picture with a drone. But that's what's happening next Friday the 10th. So it's a fun day, hopefully the weather's good. Um, T-shirt orders and food orders have already been placed. If you have any questions about those items for the Senior Celebration Day, again, Ms. Cooper or myself are your people to talk to about that. Graduation. Graduation is scheduled for May 17th, Tuesday. It will be at 6 p.m. at Clune Arena as of right now. All things could change, but we are scheduled to be back to the Air Force Academy at Clune Arena on the 17th. We will have a practice the day before, likely around 3 o'clock that afternoon on Monday. More information about specific things um, at graduation will be coming to you in, in March. Just some other important um, deadline or dates to be aware of. This March 2nd meeting, this doesn't work anymore. On March 2nd is a virtual meeting that we'll have for senior and seniors and their parents, and this is when we hope to give you all the details about what graduation will look like um, and so forth. April 1st is our senior lunch. We are, we are planning to host that at the Antlers Hotel. It's a Friday. Ticket, advance tickets will be required for that. And um, it's a nice formal event that we like to offer our families again, and that will be on the first at the Antlers downtown. April 29th will be Torch. Prom is May 30th, or I'm sorry, April 30th. Senior awards is scheduled for May 4th. And then, like I said, graduation practice and the ceremony is the 16th and 17th of May. All right, so. I have Joe Ducci here. He's gonna, he's our representative from Josh since he's gonna speak just really briefly about cap and gown ordering and announcements and so forth. Oh, thank you very much. Just for now, and I'll be out of here. I'll be done way before that. Uh, my name is Joe, I'm with Johnston's, and uh, if you've had kids graduate, raise your hand if you've had a graduate before. All right, raise your hand if this is your first graduate. Well, wow, more, it's usually, usually the other way, so that's exciting. So, uh, my job is just to help you with graduation, caps and gowns, graduation invitations, all that kind of stuff. If you got a packet on the way in, fantastic. If you didn't, grab one on the way out. It has some information in there, I'm not gonna go through it all right now. Uh, but the big thing is there's a catalog 
shows all the different things that we offer. Justin's whole gig is to uh, help you celebrate. So celebrate, if, whether this is your first graduate, your third, or your only graduate, celebrate, especially for the last kind of crud we've been through for the last year and a half. So take time to, to look through here. We offer a couple, a couple different ways that you can order things. We will offer days in school where if you want to turn things in, you can do that. If you want to just to do things online on your own time, you can do that too. So it's totally up to you. There's no advantage one way or the other. Everything costs about the same either way, so it doesn't matter. Um, some of the things you'll get early if you turn in your stuff, or you know, if you order a tassel and you turn it in in school, I'm going to hand it to you. If you order online, it's going to come a little bit later. So those kind of things. Um, the second part of the catalog deals with class rings. Usually we talk to sophomores and juniors. We haven't done that for the last couple of years because we haven't been allowed in the building. So <laughs> if you're interested in a class ring, uh, the, the best thing to do is to go online to johnstons.com because you get to build it all right in front of you. You pick a ring, it puts it on, on the screen. You put your name on the, there, it puts it on the side. Change your stone, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of fun to do. Then just print off the order form. If you turn it, turn it in at school, great. If you do it online, you just fill out everything and do it there. Uh, there's a couple different packages that you can order things from. It's kind of like McDonald's. You can order a package, you can add to your package, or just pick things separately. We do the same thing. So one of the packages that I'll talk about is the little orange sheet that's in your, flyer, in your uh, catalog, and it's just called the Rampart Ram package. Just kind of has a lot of stuff that, that we think that the moms and dads have liked over the last few years and the seniors like. So without going through everything in detail, basically it's the graduation announcement. It's what you send out to friends and family to tell them that you're going to graduate. Uh, if you've never had a graduate before, or if you've had a graduate before, you know what happens. If you haven't graduated before, you get money. People send you presents and gifts and say congratulations. So it's a kind of a fun thing. I know that my wife, always, last year's average was about 45 bucks. That's what she would give all the friends that we knew who were graduating. So people may give a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever. Just let people know because it's kind of a fun time for you. In the rest of that thing, there's uh, that package has things like uh, the announcements, name cards, thank you notes, tissues, kind of the fancy stuff. If you haven't figured it out yet, there's more moms and dads here than there are seniors. Moms and dads are probably more excited to have you graduate than the seniors are. So uh, I had one in 2015 and 2016, and I know I care way more than either one of those guys. <laughs> there's also some stuff in there that is uh, fun for the seniors, t-shirts. Uh, key ring, tassel, uh, there's a, it says tankard, it's a big mug. Everything that's, that's in here is outside, so when you come out, uh, take a look if you have a second. Um, and that's pretty much it. The only thing you have to have is the cap and gown. Anything else is totally extra, totally optional, totally up to you. If you have a cap and gown from a sibling that you want to wear, as long as it's not from 2020, uh, then it's okay. 2020, the school switched and used a different company for a year, and they're, they're back. So that's the only year that you can. If you need part of it, a cap and a tassel, you can do that, you would have to do that at school. Online, you have to order the whole package. So, that's pretty much it. Congratulations, uh, there's 200, I think I counted 280 some days till graduation, so that's exciting. Is there anything else that I missed? I talked fast, thank you guys for your time. I'll be here, we're also gonna talk to the seniors next week at the senior celebration. So if, if you can let your seniors know, if you picked up the package tonight, just tell them not to pick up another one next week. Um, and then, if you have any questions, my email's in there, let me know. Thank you much. Okay, so thank you, Joe. We're going to just uh, transition, but I um, change PowerPoints here. But um, again, we're going to be around tonight. I'm hoping many of you are going to stay for back to school night. If you're not, um, that's okay. But Leslie and I and others will be around. If you do have questions about tonight's presentation, let us know. But with that, uh, I'd like to introduce a, a, a friend, uh, Beth Hodge. She's a good friend of Rampart High School. She is an admissions officer from the University of Alabama and she lives here in the Colorado area and is going to speak to you tonight about a variety of different things from an admissions officer's perspective. Things to be thinking about, tips, um, and all those kinds of things. So while her presentation's loading, I'll just hand the microphone to her and welcome Beth. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. I appreciate Ms. Lucero and Rampart High School inviting me to speak with you tonight. We're going to just kind of talk about now, these are exciting times, and you know, this is whether it be college or job or technical school or military or whatever your next step will be. That's you know, a huge step. Um, your senior year is a huge step to being an independent and self sufficient adult for you seniors. So, um, Joe actually already asked one of the questions I was going to ask, and that was, you know, is this your first senior or have you been through this process before? But I do have a few other questions so I can kind of get to know you and, and um, speak to, to the audience tonight. 
How many of you have, how many of you seniors have started your list of colleges? So, great, great. How many of you have visited at least one college campus? Even better. And how many of you have submitted at least one college application so far? Great. So y'all are ahead of the game. The others of you, you're not behind, so don't fill. These, like I said, mentioned, these are exciting times, but they can also be stressful. But I want to make sure, and hopefully after we talk tonight, you'll make sure that the excitement overrides some of the stress. So we're going to get the stressful part out early on. There's over 4,000 colleges and universities in, in the country, uh, in the United States alone. You add international, you're about 12,000, okay? So I usually get this next view when, when we start talking about that. What happened here? Did I turn it off? I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe I hit the little button. So if you picture this so we can go, keep going, is the Kevin, um, what's his name, Kevin from um, Home Alone. Home Alone. Look, so you know, he's got his hands to his face. So that's really kind of where the, the look I get a lot. But, and there's really no magic formula to choosing a college, but you know, there are some steps you can take to find the right college fit for you. You should base your decision on where to attend college, on well, how well a college fits your needs, not where it's ranked, or how the you know, prestigious it is, you're going to look, want to look and make sure that that college that's on your list offers majors that you're interested in. You may be dead set on a particular major right now, but when you start taking those classes um, in that major, you may decide that, that isn't something you want to do for the rest of your, or a big part, big chunk of the rest of your life. So make sure that the colleges um, are kind of have a broad offering in terms of courses of study. It's really the effort that you put in and the opportunities that you take advantage of once you arrive on that college campus that are going to be more impressive to a prospective employer than um, the name of the college that you attended or what's on your, your degree. So, you know, look at not only the major, but the extracurricular and co-curricular opportunities that, that the college is on your list. Career do you plan to pursue? What what degree will get you there? These are some of the considerations you're going to want to look at when you're starting to build that list and narrow that list. You know, some professions will require an advanced degree, so it's not just your four years of college. It could be another two, four, a dozen more years of education. Um, some are going to require. You attend a technical or vocational school to learn specific trades. So, and if you're undecided right now, don't worry about it. You've got the rest of your senior year to try to figure it out. And most colleges don't really require you to designate a major to, you know, when you're going in. If you're undecided, that's fine. Use that freshman year as a time of exploration and discovery. The only reason I encourage students to go ahead and designate a major it, when you're applying is, um, it may narrow your, your um, consideration for scholarships or narrow the pool for scholarships. So if that college or school or department offers departmental scholarships, it kind of narrows that pool down for their consideration versus, you know, hundreds to potentially thousands of undecided students. So what costs are realistic for you and your family? You know, consider the availability of scholarships and financial aid at each school on your list. Some schools may actually seem out of reach financially when you're looking at that published price or the price you're going to see on their websites or in the published materials you may get at a high school visit or a college fair. But once you look at the scholarships and financial aid that's available to you, then you may find that some of the schools that you thought may be out of reach financially are actually some of the more affordable schools. And um, I'll mention it later on too, but there's also a net price calculator 
on the school's colleges and university websites that you can use as a tool to help you figure out if it's realistic or not. The time to start having those conversations about affordability is now and not in the spring when the schools, you know, colleges and universities have already exhausted their scholarship funds and things like that. So, um, and also don't fall into that trap of thinking that going out of state is more expensive than staying in state in Colorado. That used to be the general rule of thumb, but now it's in many times, and yes, I am an out of state school, but um, I think what you'll find in the search process is many times it's more affordable to go out of state than it is to stay in state in Colorado. You know, another consideration is do you want to be close to home or are you ready and eager to experience a new environment and culture? You know, if you won't be happy without weekend visits home for mom's cooking or for her to maybe do your laundry, hopefully you're doing that on your own now, um, then you should probably stay somewhere close to home. But likewise, if you're ready for more independence, there's something definitely to be said for looking at that out-of-state schools or further away from home schools. You know, look at the size of the school. Do you prefer a small college, medium-sized, large experience? Your experience will be vastly different uh, based on the size of the college and the number of students on that campus. Does the school offer clubs and extracurricular activities that fit with your interest? It's important to you for you to find activities outside the classroom that allow you to pursue current passions or even you know find new passions. So look at the recreational leadership and social opportunities that the schools on your list offer. And college is ultimately about learning, so it makes sense to imagine your ideal learning environment. Do you prefer to be part of small group discussions or do you prefer to be listen to lectures? You know, how much interaction do you want with your professors? What sort of balance are you looking for between studying and having a social life? And do you want a lot of flexibility in scheduling your classes, or do you prefer, prefer more structured curriculum? Oh, we're back. We're back. Okay. Is that the right one? Yes, it is, and you're on the right slide. Thank you. So you've already probably already started thinking about the schools that are on your interest list. and. Um, but here are a few things you can do to build your initial list if you haven't started already, and then to start narrowing down your top choices. So go to the college fairs um, that are local here. And I did get an update today from um, Southern College. It actually came from the Northern College. But that one has been moved. The Southern Colorado Fair has been moved virtual. It's going to be combined with the Greater Fairs of Denver and the Northern Colorado Fair. So, that will be uh, held on two nights as it stands now. This is still such exchange, change, but this is the information I got today. September 29th and 30th in the evenings will be the big virtual fair. And they will still have two to 300 uh, colleges and universities in attendance that you can speak with. Okay, go to the college visits that are held here at Rampart. That is a great way to get more information and ask any questions you have about a particular college or university, get advice from your high school counselors and post-grad coordinators here at Rampart. Explore online. Navion, Naviance is a great place to explore. College Confidential, the college websites, college board. Visit those college campuses. Um, sometimes it seems like a college could be the perfect fit on paper, but then when you step on that campus, you get a different vibe. From it. So if you, I know it's kind of hard right now in this continued world of COVID, but if you do have a chance to visit those colleges on your list, please do. If you can't, visit a college or, you know, one that's more local that's similar. So if you want a smaller college campus, you can go visit CSU Pueblo, um, you know, just a, a less than an hour's drive away. If you want that big college experience, go up to Boulder or Fort Collins and visit CU or, or CSU up there. Keep an open mind when building your list. Like I mentioned, um, there's a lot of learning to be done this fall about different colleges and universities, and some that you didn't really consider initially. Once you start finding out about them, then it might pique your interest, and um, don't rule out those that you think might be out of cost until you run that net cost calculator 
and talk to the colleges and universities that are on your list about scholarship and financial aid opportunities. That one. So when should you start applying to colleges? These are some frequently asked questions. Really, um, you know, there's not only application deadlines, but there's scholarship deadlines, financial aid deadlines, honors college application deadlines, and things like that. So the sooner you can start applying, the better. Um, typically, um, you know, there's some colleges that go, that use what's called, you're, well, through this process, you're going to be, hear terms such as early decision, early action, rolling deadline, um, regular decision, and things like that. So those early decision deadlines typically fall early to mid-November. There may be some that fall before that, but that's kind of a general rule of thumb. Um, so I would say the sooner you can get start getting those applications in, the more it maximizes your, uh, your opportunities within that particular college and for scholarships too. So work ahead of the game as much as you can. Um, Next question, how many colleges should I apply to? This is a very personal decision. Um, generally, rule of thumb is anywhere, you know, like three to five, maybe a few more. But you want to um, make sure that you have some options in there in case something happens. You know, if you're applying to an early decision school, then if you're admitted into that college, that is a binding decision. So if you have a, uh, applied to that school and the financial aid works out, then you're committed to that college. Early action is a little bit more flexible. Um, you just get a decision earlier so you can kind of start making those plans. And then rolling is, is, as the applications come in, you, the school, the college or university is making those decisions. And um, so just, yeah. What's the Common App? I think Ms. Lucera kind of mentioned that, but that is a, uh, an application that is used by, what, about 800 schools right now that um, it's one application and you send that in. So that simplifies your application process. Should you apply to colleges if your grades and test scores are below a school's preferred range? Yes, because most of those are median or average that you're going to see on the website or when the answer you get when you ask people such as myself. So there are students that fall below that range and they may have special conditional admissions programs that you can be admitted in if you have those, those lower scores too. So don't, um, don't limit your, your options there. Give it a shot if it's of interest to you. And should you appear or apply to colleges that may appear outside your family's financial range? And again, start doing some research on that because what that published price is may be vastly different than what that net price ultimately comes out to be. There are several pieces to a college application and not all schools will require all of these, but there will be some mix of these components that will be required. Of course, your application form, that's how you let them know you're interested in them. Um, beyond just, you know, hey, what's the cost and what's your deadline? So that really gives them, gives them a hard form of your um, interest in them. Then there's application fees that generally range anywhere from $35 to $75, depending on the college. Um, as Ms. Lucero mentioned, Colorado does have a free app week for in-state schools here. So definitely, if those are on your radar, Make sure you get those applications in that week because that will save you potentially, you know, $100, $200 or so. The high school transcript, that's how we get to know how you perform academically. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're meeting all the requirements of the, the courses that a particular college or university requires for admission as well as lets us know, you know, how you perform. Um, we understand that there may be some ups and downs, so don't let that limit you too, but we really ultimately kind of want to see some effort and some upward trends there. And we all will be not, you know, we all understand COVID and the challenges that presented last year and potentially this year too, so um, don't let that be a hindrance there. Test scores, a lot of schools, about 1,400, are test optional right now. 
um, or may not require test scores. So just know if, you know, do your research into a particular college or university that you're applying to to find out if they are requiring those or not this year. Letters of recommendation may, may be required by some colleges and universities, and Ms. Lucera touched upon those. But, um, you know, solicit those from the people that are going to write the best recommendations, the most glowing recommendations for you. And make sure that you provide them that adequate time to spend with that and write the best report for you. And give them a resume so that they, you know, it may be a teacher you've had for a couple of years or that you think knows you very well, but it's sometimes best to provide them a resume so they have that top of mind. Many schools will require you to submit an essay, and the Common App includes an essay prompt, so you may be given a specific topic or a list, or it may be more open-ended as to your subject. And this is how schools get to know you beyond your grades and your test scores. And always proofread your essays, write them, proofread them once, step away from it a little while, reread it again, and have a trusted adult read it too. And then some schools and, and programs may require portfolios or interviews too. So tips for preparing your college application. Get organized, start early. Um, I'm a big proponent of Excel spreadsheets, so kind of build a spreadsheet for each school that's on your list. List those important deadlines, who your, your contact should be, your regional recruiter or admissions counselor. Um, start early, be consistent with the information. And what I mean by that is be consistent with the email you use because that's sometimes how we kind of match up your questions that come into us through the portal or through the email form that, um, so we can make sure that we're answering your questions best we can. Be careful and proofread and check for accuracy. Keep your counselors in the loop and then confirm the people who write your letters or, letters or recommendation. And then I would also add, um, check your emails, as Ms. Lucero said, because that's still how a lot of colleges and universities will check with your, you know, check in with you or communicate with you. So, you know, I've always, I've, I've got those every once in a while that, well, I don't check my emails. Okay, well, neither are you answering your phone, neither, most of the time. So, check your voicemails, make sure you've got your voicemail set up because we're not there to pester you, we're really there to kind of help you navigate the process and make sure you've got the information you need. Another piece that I would caution you on is your social media, okay? Um, we kind of, a lot of us have social media, and we're, you know, that's kind of our place to vent sometimes or, or show excitement. But if it's something that you wouldn't want to share or want your grandparents to see or even your parents to see, then don't put it out there. Um, each year, each spring, I probably see a couple of dozen emails from students that are writing out people at their high school or that they know about questionable social media posts. So don't put yourself in that position. So now let's transition to college costs. And again, I've already mentioned focus on the net price, not the uh, published price. And you can see that you know your sticker price or what you're going to see in those brochures and on the website. Once you subtract from your financial aid and scholarships, your net price can be substantially lower than that. There are five main categories of expenses that you need to take into consideration. Of course, tuition and fees are the prices you pay for taking classes at a college. That amount may vary based on your academic program, the number of credit hours you take, and whether you're an in-state or out-of-state student. Colleges usually offer a variety of housing options and meal plans, and those charges will vary based on the accommodations and plan you select. You'll need books and, of course, other course materials. Anyone want to take a guess as to the um, yearly estimate for books for college? 2000 2500 <laughs> You're actually on the high side. It's about 1200 an academic year for books. Now, there are ways you can lower those costs typically. And, you know, as an incoming freshman, you're going to want to have those books ready that very first day of classes. And if the syllabus says you need that book, then go ahead and get it. If not, wait until after that first class with your professor because they may say, 
give you some alternate, less expensive options than having to buy that new book. And don't hesitate to looking into used books or Amazon or Chegg or something like that too, because those are ways you can lower those books and supply costs. And don't forget those personal expenses, which include laundry. You're going to want to go out and eat dinner, you know, eat with your new friends, cell phone bills, and anything else you would normally spend money on. If you're taking a car to campus, you're more than likely going to get a parking ticket somewhere in those first few months. So you might have to accommodate a few parking tickets and those personal expenses. And then transportation too. You know, if you're staying close to home, then you're still gonna have a parking pass, parking permit on campus, gas, things like that. Going further away, airfare, anything like that, you'll have to accommodate. I mentioned earlier the net price calculator. All colleges and universities are required to have this on their website. You go to the main website for the college or university and just type in net price calculator in the search bar, it's going to take you to this tool. And this tool is designed to estimate cost and eligibility for financial aid based on the information you uh, input, enter about your student and your family. So it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it will give you a good ballpark figure of what your net price will be for that school. There's four main types of financial assistance. There's scholarships, grants, loans, and work study. Each college has its own financial aid and scholarship policies, so again, that's where those Excel spreadsheets come in handy to, for staying um, um, on top of all these things. So I always encourage students to really maximize your scholarships as much as possible because that's free money to you. That is gifted to you. It is not money you have to pay back. On the other end of the spectrum are loans. Um, and that is money that you have to pay back with interest. So you really want to work to optimize and maximize those scholarships, that free money as much as possible, and then minimize those loans. The, among the class of 2018 college graduates, 69% of college students took out student loans and they graduated with an average debt of just under $30,000, including both private and federal debt. Meanwhile, 14% of their parents took out an average of close to $3,600,000 in federal payment or federal plus loans. The average monthly student loan payment is just under $400 a month. So, you know, as a new college graduate, that can be a substantial amount of your paycheck. So, sources of scholarships, you really want to think outside the box. Scholarships are awarded based on achievement, need, or both. They may be awarded by the university for academic merit, athletic ability, or specific talents, or external sources such as employers, community organizations, churches, and individuals. I did some research on some scholarships um, that, you know, are kind of outside the box scholarships, but. Um, just to kind of let you know what's available out there to you. How many of you are left-handed? Okay, there's scholarships out there for left-handers, left-handed people. And it always kind of makes, I always find it humorous how many left-handers actually raise their right hand for that question, answer that question. Um, redheads, there's a few redheads in here. There's scholarships for redheads. If you're extremely tall, like over six, eight or something like that, there's scholarships for you. Um, it just takes a quick little Google search to find some of these scholarships. One of the sites I found some really cool ones on is called Unigo. Um, and there's a, a scholarship for, with the prompt, imagine a historical figure is brought back to life. Who is it? What is their favorite mobile app? That's a 250 word prompt, or you write a 250 word prompt to that question, that could win you $2,500, okay? Um, there's the Superpower Scholarship. So you could win $2,500 again by writing a 250 word response to the question, which superhero or villain would you want to change places with for a day and why? And what if you had a chance for a do-over moment in your life? What would it be? How would that affect you in your future? You could write a 250 word response to win the do-over scholarship and that's again, that's, that one's worth about $1,500. So they are out there, it just takes a little bit more effort to find the ones that aren't, the effort and time to find the ones that aren't offered by the universities. So 
Some other scholarship resources, again, the university guides or websites, those are going to be the ones that are uh, offered directly by the university. So those are the easiest ones to get. Scholarship search sites such as scholarships.com, College Board, Unigo was the one I mentioned a minute ago. Um, Raise.me, that is one that uh, several hundred colleges and universities participate in. And they will sometimes give you what are called micro scholarships for things is, that you already sh could be doing during this process. Um, some of them will give, you know, a couple hundred dollars for visiting their campus. Some will give $50 for every A on your report card and things like that. So maybe one you want to look into. And then um, if you do a lot of volunteer and service work, do something.org is another great resource. And then there's also, if you've got a health condition, there's scholarships for those too. So now we're going to switch to financial aid, that piece. Scholarships, students, that is something you need to take the lead on. Okay, you need to take the lead on finding those and researching those scholarships. The financial aid piece, when you start talking about loans, scholarship, or loans, grants, and work study, that is more based in many, most instances, the majority of instances, based on the parents' finances, okay? So how much aid can you get? And that's really going to depend on your financial situation and your need. The financial, ex um, the expected family contribution, or ESC, is determined by a formula that takes into account information such as the student's and parents' income and assets, how many people are in the family household, and how many of those people are in college. The end result of this formula is the number we use to determine a student's award eligibility. Actually, I think that piece about how many people are in college, that's been scratched going forward. So um, I need to update that. The cost of attendance is determined by the school and may include those categories that we mentioned earlier, the tuition fees, books, supplies, room and board. And then your financial need is determined by subtracting the ESC from the cost of attendance. And because the cost of attendance differs from school to school, a student's financial need will differ from school to school too, even though your ESC will stay constant. In order to be considered by, for uh, federal financial aid, you must submit the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And I have um, noted that in a different font up here, underlined it, italicized it, because that is the official website, fafsa.ed.gov. There, if you go in and just Google FAFSA, it's going to come up with a long list of other sites. And if you go to the .com or .org um, or something like that, those are not the official websites, and those could potentially be scams. And you don't want to be putting any um, sensitive financial or personal information out there for that. So it opens for you seniors. It opens up next month on October 1st. So get that done as quickly as possible. It's going to use the prior prior year or PPY tax data. So how you're going to think about that is you're going to be applying for the aid in the 2022 tax year. You're going to be submitting the form in 2021, and it's going to be using your 2020 tax data. So just step it back that way. Complete the FAFSA as soon as possible after October 1st. Then you're probably going to be waiting a couple months. Most financial aid officers will not be mailed till spring. And then um, you don't have to, you know, once you start getting all those in, that's when you're going to start comparing those financial aid offers and really see what those net prices are going to be in your out of pocket. And then you accept the aid that you want and be aware that you do not have to accept the full amount of aid offered. If you only need 5,000 of, of the 10,000 that's been offered, then just accept the 5,000 so that you're not paying interest on the other balance. So we've got only just a couple minutes, so we're gonna go through this real quickly. A lot of people think that the loans they're going to get through the colleges and universities and through the FAFSA is a lot higher than it is, but um, loans are a self-help type of option and assistant that parents and students borrow to help pay those college expenses. The three types of loans available are the Stafford loan, unsubsidized and subsidized, and the PLUS loans. And all loans must be repaid with interest. So again, just accept what you need and not what you want. The federal Stafford loan is the most popular low interest federal loan. 
and that uh, loan is insured by the federal government and offers some re flexible repayment options. The Everyone is going to qualify for a Stafford loan. Bill Gates would qualify for a Stafford loan. What the difference is, is your need, and that will just determine whether you're offered an unsubsidized or an subsidized. Subsidized is based on need, unsubsidized is not based on need. And your limit is for your freshman year is $5,500 for that. So the balance would have to be by other um, funds, including the, the Parent PLUS loan. Federal work study, um, that's another opportunity that is awarded through the FAFSA. And that's where students are able to receive part-time jobs to help them cover educational costs. Those funds are limited and can, in many instances, be awarded on a first-come, first-served basis. The last type of federal aid we'll discuss are grants. Grants are gift aid and do not have to be repaid. And then when you fill out the FAFSA, you are applying for these federal grants, plus any grants that are available through the state of Colorado. The Pell Grant is an entitlement grant, and if you qualify, then your funds will be made available to you, and the amount that you received is based on the amount of hours that you enroll for a particular semester and your expected family contribution. Now, there's other ways to cover some of those college costs, too. Um, student jobs always encourage students to look for employment if you're concerned about affording college. Um, there's usually lots of jobs that are offered either on campus or in the community um, around campus. And a lot of students are concerned that that's going to take away from their studies. But research has actually shown that students who work up to 20 hours a week actually perform better academically because they learn those time management and prioritization skills. And while not ostensibly about financial aid, uh, how a college handles AP and IB credits can be important to the full price or full picture of college costs. Because if you go in with a lot of AP credits or some dual enrollment, things like that, then that can shorten the time, amount of time that you have to, um, that it requires to finish your bachelor. WUI is the Western Undergraduate Exchange. You're probably going to hear that a lot. That is um, a tuition agreement among a lot of the Western colleges where you get 150 if you decide to go out of state to a WUI college and the program that you're minor, majoring in is part of the WUI, then you pay 150% of the in-state rate versus normally the out-of-state costs are about 300%. And then there's the College Opportunity Fund that provides a stipend to eligible undergraduate students at participating Colorado universities. Um, so if you've taken some dual enrollment courses and things like that, you may already be enrolled in that, but that is definitely something if you're planning to stay in state, ask about that stipend. Um, and then there's the federal and uh, private loan education loans that are typically have um, higher interest rates too. So just some quick reminders, know the deadlines. Those are typically not flexible, so you want to meet those. Um, consistently check your emails and make sure you set up and check your voicemails. Start your research early. Avoid those scams with the FAFSA and scholarships. If you're free is the first F in FAFSA. So if you're asked to pay for it, you know you're on the wrong site. Get off of that pretty quickly. Same with scholarships. If you're asked to pay for a scholarship or something like that, then more than likely it's, it's a scam. And then you do your best to save on those education costs and just know that you're not in this alone. You've got resources here at Rampart that are happy to help you navigate this process and make it the least stressful possible. Again, these are exciting times and you want to have fun with this process and not let the stress take over, okay? Um, just ask, that's what we're here to do. Most colleges and universities have people such as myself and you just have to go on the website to find us, okay? Well, y'all enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you again and um, have a great night. gym and there is a brief introduction by Mr. Alvarez and then you'll be able to follow your student's schedule. If you do have some questions and want to stay back and ask myself or uh, Ms. Hodge, we'll, we'll hang out for a bit. So thank you um, and we'll visit out, out in the hall so uh, Ms. Robbins can have her class.